Good evening, and thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Bill Bentley, the lay leader for Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart Strath. This is our Vesper prayer service. Each Tuesday night at 7.30, we join together in a virtual community for this simple sunset or evening prayer service. Through these evening prayers, we rest in the presence of God each day and are refreshed as we find the hope, peace, and joy that is abundant there. One of the goals of this brief service is to encourage each of us to develop and nurture our own personal practice of an evening devotion, a time each week where you can reset your spirit by remembering key points from the day and look ahead to tomorrow. Tonight, we will begin with a short responsive prayer, and then I'll lead a reading of a psalm, and I hope you will join me in the responses, which will appear in yellow on your screen. We will hear a passage from the Bible. I'll follow that with a very short homily and conclude with a prayer. Finally, we will say a good night prayer together. I hope you will feel relaxed and thankful and be ready to start your nighttime rest. Let's begin. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the moon rises to light the night sky. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Shepherd us, Lord, with your faithful hand and guide us gently into your land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our responsive reading tonight will come from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the land, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Our scripture for tonight will come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he, Jesus, looked up at the disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. In this part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he is describing what the kingdom of heaven on earth looks like. Jesus is listing the values in life which will lead to prosperity and salvation. He uses the Beatitudes to speak to a variety of listeners and to communicate several messages about the kingdom of heaven. But take note, Jesus is not calling his listeners to earning salvation by merit, 
by living out these character qualities in order to enter into the kingdom. These are reflections of God's grace, not law. These are also not blessings that will only be seen at the end of the age. These kingdom blessings are found both in the present heaven on earth and in the future perfected heaven. As Jesus' disciples were facing daily challenges, they lived in the realities of a fallen world. We're charged to reject the evil path and allow God's Spirit to produce these Christ-like characteristics in us. We read this sermon in Luke's Gospel, but Luke probably got it from Matthew's Gospel, which we believe came out before Luke's. And the whole purpose of Matthew's Gospel was to prove the case that Jesus was the promised Messiah fulfilling all Jewish prophecy. In fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah 61, verse 1, Jesus is the coming one who is endowed with the Spirit and anointed by the Lord to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release of the prisoners. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who respond. In these eight brief declarations, Jesus makes two sweeping pronouncements. The kingdom of heaven is available to the oppressed in the land, to those who doubt themselves, to those who are declared to be unworthy of the kingdom. The second pronouncement is one of condemnation on those who have rejected God's ways and have found satisfaction in the pleasures of life apart from God. This is especially emphasized in Luke's version where Jesus gives four woes to counterbalance the pronouncements. So what do we make of these eight statements? And what about the woes? How do we internalize these blessings? These qualities will accompany the transformation that occurs in the life of each of us as each of us submits to the operation of the kingdom life through the Spirit. In the Beatitudes, and indeed in the Sermon on the Mount as a whole, the emphasis is on a righteousness that begins with the transformation of our inner life, the inner transformation that occurs through believing then becomes outward behavior based on new inner values. In closing, I'll share with you the Cliff Notes version of the Beatitudes. It's found in the book of Micah. It's chapter 6, verse 8. Do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. I think I need that stitched on a sampler. Gracious God, thank you for always seeking us. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for giving us a vision of what your kingdom can be. And thank you for giving us an opportunity here and now to model your kingdom and help bring it to perfection right here on earth. Amen. Join me now for our good night prayer. Lord, we can't sleep because we just don't know what to do. Big decisions press hard. We can't see all the answers, but we believe that you are leading us. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to see your hand guiding us at every turn. Make the way clear before us, and we ask that you would open the right doors and close the ones that aren't meant for us to walk through. We give it to you again right now. And believe that you are helping us and working on our behalf, even as we sleep. Amen. Thank you for joining me. We will be here on the Calvary United Methodist Church Facebook page next Tuesday night at 730 for Vesper Prayers. And I hope we can all be together again then. Good night.